Hello everyone, welcome to our SafeBridge event, Upskilling Your Crew When Complete Solutions Matter. I'm Imanalia Colius and I'm the Global Sales Leader for SafeBridge. Uh, to begin, I would like to introduce who we have with us today. Uh, we have Valentinos. Uh, Valentinos is responsible for the life cycle and development of SafeLearn and SafeMetric product lines. Uh, he is the leading uh, the cross-functional team to deliver online training and assessment products that meet the needs of the maritime industry. Next, we have Michael. Uh, Michael Karakis is the Managing Director of Karakis Research and Consulting Limited. He has an extensive experience in business consulting and project management. And since 2003, he is actively involved in research and development projects, both EU uh, and national, and has developed multiple innovative and tailor-made management uh, business training programs specialized in various sectors. Lastly, we have Evie. Uh, Evie is a counseling psychologist and uh, currently coordinating the research and development initiatives uh, related to the Safe Metrics product of SafeBridge. And she is also responsible for preparing company integrated reports for the CFER psychometrics assessment uh, and, per and also performs various statistical data analysis. Uh, Evie uh, proudly holds a master's degree in counseling psychology. Welcome to uh, all three of my uh, wonderful guests here. Uh, and uh, to open up the discussion, what I'm going to do is talk about uh, throughout recent years, the various technological advancements, the COVID pandemic, and the nature of the CFERS profession uh, really has contributed to helping organizations recognize and understand that being a successful seafarer requires a unique set of uh, rank specific skills. So the challenges faced by the industry in 2020, uh, this has also, they, they have also acted as an added catalyst in the shifts in perspective and raising importance of soft and cognitive skills. So as a response to the ever-growing demand uh, for CFERS to be equipped with these specific set of non-technical skills. Uh, SafeBridge um, has partnered with the leading experts of human resources and development, which is CRC HR Solutions. Uh, and by doing this, we were able to uh, create the first truly complete and industry-specific solution for the targeted and continuous development of these skills. Um, so just to begin, I want to give everybody a background um, so we could all understand uh, the foundational aspects uh, of its de development and what kind of expertise was put into this project. Um, so I'm going to uh, turn to Evie. Um, in order for us to really understand the concept of psychometrics assessments, I'm going to ask Evie with her experience um, to briefly discuss what we really mean by psychometrics assessment. If you could go ahead and briefly go into um, psychometrics assessment so we all could get on board on what we really mean. Yeah, so uh, firstly, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to attend this webinar. Uh, so to begin with, uh, generally industrial and organizational psychology is concerned with understanding and predicting human behavior in uh, work settings. Mm -hmm. So uh, as such, its practitioners are involved in the use of assessments to describe the status of individuals, uh, of teams or organizations. Uh, so a psychometric assessment is a process of evaluation mm -hmm. that uses a combination of tools to make hypotheses about a person and their, uh, their knowledge, their skills, their behavior, uh, their attitudes, or their personality. Uh, currently, the most widely used uh, tools of psychometric assessments are tests, uh, interviews, and uh, behavior observations, to name a few. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. So, um, how would you ab apply assessing non-technical skills uh, in our industry? Okay, so uh, basically the non-technical skills assessments uh, can be used to make more accurate data-driven crewing decisions regarding their selection, promotion, uh, retention, or trainings in the maritime industry. Uh, so assessments may assist 
companies in placing the right person to the right job. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, their, their skills and capabilities will match their job description that will consequently help seafarers uh, reach their highest potential to ensure maximum effectiveness. Uh, also, by identifying the crew's limitations, mm -hmm. uh, companies will be able to intervene early and efficiently regarding training and development. Uh, these assessments are crucial for, for smooth operations at sea, uh, given the fact that uh, the most accidents and incidents at sea are not due to lack of knowledge, but due to lack of skills. Uh, additionally, most uh, non-technical skills assessments uh, conduct an attitude check, check um, and inform the companies on the hazardous attitudes and social desirability tendencies of the assessed individuals mm -hmm. in order to be cautious when interpreting the results. Well, thank you, Abby. Yeah. Um, so a key takeaway from uh, what you've just said is the fact that there, of course, there is the set of uh, skills. Uh, which seafarers must possess in order to execute their tasks and perform them effectively. And the non-technical assessments are the tools required to identify uh, these types of skills. So when um, we're talking about assessments um, and now that we've pinpointed um, certain skills, right, uh, that we need, we need to start discussing about how we develop them. Uh, so when Talking about uh, the crewing process, assessments are the tools, um, but what comes next is obviously the continuous development and nurturing of these skills. So now I want to turn to Michael. So with your experience uh, in the field of HR development, right, what can you clarify for the audience exactly uh, what we mean by non-technical skills? Thanks, Emanolia, and uh, I'm really, really happy to be with all of you. And uh, I would also like to thank everybody that is joining us today. We're pre really privileged to have uh, all of you, and uh, thanks for your time. Now, back to your question. Uh, when we mainly, when we refer to non-technical skills, we mainly refer to soft skills and cognitive skills. Soft skills are skills like uh, leadership, communication, work, uh, work ethics. Um, and so on, while uh, cognitive skills are rather the internal process of the mind, uh, how we recall information, how we retrieve information, how we learn. And of course, we need these skills always depending on, uh, on our duties, on our job, on your role, and so on. Uh, an author, for example, by profession needs communication skills in writing, in, in writing form, writing skills like this, or a salesman needs uh, negotiation, persuasion skills, listening skills. Mm -hmm. um, a captain on board, among others, needs leadership skills, uh, negotiation, decision making, special orientation, and so many others. Mm -hmm. well, well, you, you know, you thank you for the um, the explanation, um, and it's really important that um, you know we we tend to focus on technical skills um, and not on the soft skills and cognitive skills that are needed um, to actually do that job function. Yes, you may know how to do that job, but you don't have uh, the skills to, um, like you said, be the salesperson or uh, be the leader that you need to be. Um, so how do you go about developing these type of skills? Uh... Look, um, soft skills are not a process. Mm -hmm. So we don't uh, develop uh, soft skills as a step-by-step -step process. We, what we are aiming is to structure the thoughts of uh, the participants rather than explicitly guide them, telling them what to do. We try to structure their thoughts on uh, three main uh, pillars, uh, from the big picture to the, to the low picture, from values and the culture of the organization Mm -hmm. that are uh, the issues that are the most important in the case of the maritime sector. Let's say one value that is non-negotiable, it's safety on board. You can do whatever you, you want, but you cannot negotiate safety. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. That's a value that we have to keep always in mind. The second pillar is um, uh, the goals and the priorities uh, of the organization, the team, the, the person, and so on. And of course, 
ending up to the actions that are needed uh, to succeed this, uh, these goals. Uh, um, taking always, of course, uh, into consideration issues like the policies, the procedures, uh, and the regulations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we mainly uh, seek to, to, to make participants validate to themselves why they're doing what they're doing based on the pillars I mentioned before, and be flexibly uh, approaching the issues on their day-to-day -day operations, rather than limiting their minds on, on areas that we just mentioned in the, in the training. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when it comes to the soft skills training, um, just going back on my past experience, um, so anytime I got promoted, uh, I would go through a leadership training or um, uh, like one was how to properly give feedback and communicate with your teams. Um, so that's the communication skills. Mm -hmm. um, the only time that I've really done a soft skills uh, development training was in the means of promotion. But can it be also included in induction trainings for a new hire? Definitely, because um, uh, soft skills are the required qualities, I would say, that the position requires. So it's, it's not a matter only for promotion. It's rather um, um, uh, filling the skill gaps that are needed based on your role and your position. Mm -hmm. So uh, soft skills are, I think, the, the required qualities that we have to be inducted as well in, uh, when you um, get a job. Yeah. No, I, I, I completely agree with that, um, with that approach because you can, with the new hires, you can kind of mold them into the person that you want them to be, what, what task you want them to have and how you want them to conduct that task. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, and that's why it's important to, to, uh, to develop soft skills based on the values and the culture of each company mm -hmm. and the important issues that uh, each organization is, uh, is dealing with. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you, uh, you you bring up some great points. Um, so of course, um, going back to what you initially said regarding the soft skills and non-technical skills, um, obviously there's a correlation, right, with yeah. technical skills and non-technical skills. So how do they work together? I would say that uh, technical and non-technical skills are supplementing each other. Uh, technical skills are, let's say, the prerequisite skills that are needed to fulfill your task, to do your job. Uh, it's a more mechanical approach to doing your, to doing your job. While the soft skills are, are the qualities required to, to, uh, to get you further. Uh, just imagine a well uh, educate, educated, uh, technically employee that might not be able to collaborate with uh, his team or not be able to uh, communicate well with, your, with uh, his or her uh, colleagues. It will influence the, their performance definitely. Or uh, a well-experienced seafarer, and it doesn't necessarily mean that he can uh, lead. He needs the leadership skills either to be promoted, as you previously mentioned, or if he already possesses a, an officer position. Yeah. Um, so, it, you, and you bring up more great points. So this this is where um, I guess where Evie's you know assessment piece is actually uh, take um, real importance because if you're thinking of promoting someone you or hiring someone, right? You should kind of you, you should find and assess what what kind of gaps that you would need to fill with the individual. Uh, so you do bring a lot of uh, great points. Uh, thank you for that. Okay. And exactly that psychometric assessment tools are, um, uh, are giving us rich information, uh, mm -hmm. indicating the skill gaps. So when we have uh, this indication, this clear indication, we can toggle the specific issues that uh, a CIFR or an employee has and uh, we give more weight, a more targeted approach. Even, even more, if we have a specialized assessment tool like Safe Metrics, which mm -hmm. is a dedicated, specialized tool for the maritime sector, then this has a much higher uh, added value. 
meaning that we tackle the issues that really matter, the issues that uh, seafarers uh, deal uh, on their day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. So obviously, um, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, right? Um, everybody is different. They're, um, developing non-technical skills is obviously um, unique um, because every individual case is unique. Um, so what, how, how would you um, do this? How, how, how do you develop this type of training? Um, from my perspective, I think the best approach is uh, the coaching methodology. Although it's a little bit challenging in an e-learning environment, it's doable. There are ways to do it. And it is, it's not something that is new. Uh, this is uh, most of the coaching uh, methodologies are based on the Socratic method. The ancient Greeks, it's the Mephitic method, uh, as it was called, giving birth to knowledge um, um, by asking the proper questions, by asking the targeted questions to trigger the minds, to trigger the curiousness in order to flexibly find a solution in our problems. Um, so how would one, how would a, a soft skill training be? Is it more, uh, you're not giving them the process, right? Is it more of a, a mindset, uh, having to change the mindset? It's a mindset building, definitely. That's, uh, that's one thing. And it's a, a structure approach to see the day-to-day -day operation. As I mentioned before, the three pillars, the, the why we're doing what, what we're doing and the how. So why is the values in the culture, the, the non-negotiable uh, issues that we, are, uh, we have to fulfill every day, mm -hmm. the goals and the priorities of the company, the personal goals and the priorities, and of course, the way to do it. So it's the right. why, what and how. Right. Now, um, definitely, um, I mean, in my opinion, I, I mean, I, I'm raising a 15-year-old, so um, it, you do, you have to change, it, it is just like this, you, you change their mindsets or how their minds think, right? Because um, what I find, uh, even with my, with my daughter, um, I can give her the tools, right, the, the, the process, but you, the situational awareness, not everything um, goes for every situation, pretty yeah. much. You're, yeah. ex you're, you're right, and uh, this is how we approach it. We want to approach, uh, we don't want to limit the mind of the, of the participants by just mentioning or as a process uh, the development of soft skills. We want to for them to validate to themselves why they're doing what they're doing and how to do it and be able on a situational basis, on a project basis, on various, uh, on various uh, issues that we'll be facing to, to be able to find the solution. Uh, you're, you're right on that. And you, you brought up uh, methodology before, so obviously there's different approach, approaches of developing this. Can you name some of the best practices um, on developing uh, what methodology to use? Um, uh, mainly we use uh, storytelling, we can use storytelling metaphors, uh, third generation and neuro-linguistic uh, uh, programming techniques. Uh, there, are, um, there are a lot of ways to approach soft skills. Uh, the thing is, depending on the, on, the, on the area that we're dealing with, to find the appropriate uh, tool that will be uh, allowing that, um, participants to structure their thoughts. But definitely, if, they, if you make it a more personal approach, storytelling metaphors, it's easier for them to, 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 to make it uh, personal and uh, structure their thoughts on, uh, on what they're doing. All right, good. Thank you so much. Um, for, you've, you've brought up some great points. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the training and development is such a large topic. You, you can talk about it forever. Uh, so, and, and that's that's usually what I do. Um, <laughs> but for the sake of everybody's time, I am going to, um, you know, go into our next section. And thank you so much. Um, so, as SafeBridge, 
um, we're we're a re, uh, research focused company, and um, so re industry research has been pretty much embedded into our DNA. So. We asked ourselves this same question in 2016 and uh, have since focused our research on this subject. Our goal was pretty much simple, understand our industry, understand our crew managers, uh, understand the CFERS and conclude uh, a solution that would prepare us for today. So uh, with that being said, I am going to introduce uh, Valentinos onto the screen. Thank you for the great introduction and thanks to everyone for taking the time to be with us today. It's an honor. Um, My question to you, um, so as SafeBridge, right, we're this, we pretty much thrive on uh, industry research. Um, can you tell us, briefly go into how SafeBridge conducted their research and introduce um, some key conclusions and op uh, observations that we have? Yes, uh, as you correctly said, uh, research is embedded in the SafeBridge DNA and uh, we've been researching the industry for, for years now. Uh, as we know that our industry is preoccupied with uh, technical skills, the last five years uh, we have uh, seen a clear trend towards non-technical aspects of performance, such as what um, Evie, yourself, and, and Michael said before, soft skills and cognitive abilities. Now, uh, it's interesting that industry reports from 2019 showed uh, almost 2,500 tragedies at sea, uh, which were caused by a failure in decision-making or assertiveness, rather than by deficiency of SQL and experience or, or knowledge. So it is important to mention that such skills are increasingly important for both the well-being of the seafarers mm -hmm. and the overall safety of the operations at sea. Uh, something else that we have seen is that since uh, 2018, the last three years, we see uh, a rapid increase of 18% of for companies which started using psychometrics. Uh, psychometrics can be uh, personality tests or psychometric assessments. And although personality tests has, have contributed a lot to humanity and are not necessarily the wrong way to go, they are prone, we, we have seen that they are prone to errors of judgment because they can classify an individual uh, based on non-credible theories. Mm -hmm. Therefore, although a personality test can show as if you're being generous, for example, enthusiastic, sincere, uh, they are not primarily significant for a seafarer, uh, we, which we know. Uh, we are in a hazardous attitude, uh, a hazardous environment where safety cannot be compromised, as um, uh, Michael said before. So, mm -hmm. assessing skills related to coping under pressure or being able to manage oneself, those are significant for safe operations. And here is where to, what I want to add on the above that psychometric assessments are comparing an individual to a tested population. Mm -hmm. So they give us also the benefit uh, that it, it will be, it can be, they can be subject matter specific. And for example, for the example of uh, safe metrics, uh, psychometric assessments, they're also industry and rank specific. Mm -hmm. Well, so you brought up personality assessments, right? To me, in a perfect world, I, I would think the, the personality assessments should be um, used more as a tool for building the team, right? So first you should, you know, assess the skills, the technical and non-technical skills, so you know who you have, right? And then use the personality assessment to actually create that team that you need. Because uh, if you have someone that uh, their, their personality assessment um, it says something that you know they, they don't work well with others or something like this you can try and find the mat uh, the match um, between that person uh, and what team they should go on based off of the individuals that you've put on there um, do you do you agree with that kind of a statement or uh, although it's a thin line I fully agree that uh, one of them is building the right team uh, for the sake of, of the team and for the sake of, of the collaboration and, and, and the attributes of the person. And the other one, it's uh, building the team for the right job. Right. So I fully agree. Thank you. Um, so 
you know, when when doing the research and actually uh, and being on the front lines and talking to customers about psychometric assessments, um, basically what they were talking about is the 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 assessment is great, safe metrics is great, but there's no second piece, right? Um, so from your research, uh, how do you see the industry reacting? Uh, to these? Is the industry fully equipped to address these type of issues? This is exactly what we came to see from the industry. Uh, there is uh, an increase in interest in measuring soft skills and cognitive abilities, of course. Uh, this, is, this has been, been said. Uh, and together w with a transparent picture of, of the crew. So we need to cultivate the development of the individuals. And this has been brought uh, to the forefront uh, the late years. Uh, why? Uh, the, because of the, the automation of process of board, it's, it's huge. Uh, it creates a bigger demand for officers to be competent with a set of skills that go beyond technical skills, multi-dimensional skills and, and digital thinking. So uh, there is inevitable that those shortcomings that uh, derive from assessments, uh, they need to, uh, since they are exposed, they need to be uh, developed uh, into strengths. So this is where we identified, uh, as you rightfully right said, a gap uh, of an industry-specific solution which will lead uh, and follow the development path of the seafarers, mm -hmm. uh, creating a functional force uh, rather than uh, shortcomings uh, for the skills required for each position uh, or rank. Uh, today, uh, what we can see from the industry, it's a vast number of customers that are trying to cover for these needs, uh, utilizing different solutions, non-industry specific, in order to assess those skills. And at the same time, they are reaching to a plethora of training solutions which are offered from even from different industries uh, or tend to go towards the generic solutions from mm -hmm. different providers, which this highlights even more the, the, the demand for a complete solution under one roof. Yeah, no, um, it was it was quite apparent. Uh, there was definitely a gap in the industry uh, for one solution one, under one roof. Um, the statistics that you brought out um, that has gone into our research was it was a huge, and it was kind of the catalyst uh, for psychometrics assessments, the importance of it. Um, but no one knew what to do next. Uh, yes, we create, you know. Everyone was creating uh, assessments. They were utilizing their own solutions, but they weren't. No one gave them the process, so to speak, to actually uh, use it to their advantage. Right. Um, so we learned about psychometrics assessments. We learned about uh, soft skills uh, training and what goes into uh, the development of these soft skills and uh, to change and mold uh, the, your individual's way of thinking into what you want to do. So um, Safe Metrics has existed for the past, I think, three years. Um, and answering to our, our clients' needs, um, we, we have, um, with collaboration, we've developed uh, the trainings uh, to go along with um, the assessment that we have. So it's going to create a targeted, so essentially uh, you can make data-driven decisions when hiring uh, and also promoting, uh, as well as giving them their personalized pretty much training um, because we have, uh, based on their assessment, you can train. Um, so and uh, Valentinos, if you want to go ahead and introduce the complete package aspect, um, and you already said under one roof, but we're so excited because it is under one roof, um, and the ease of administrating, um, and administrating and focusing on the individuals and the targeted training. Exactly, Manolia. Uh, today we are proud to say that we have the complete solution. We're presenting the, the complete solution, although it has been a challenging path, uh, as you said before, to to have a, a rank-specific, job-specific assessment and then the right tool to develop each of those skills for each of, of those ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, when designing uh, this complete package of training through, through assessment, we have positioned the CIFRA the, at the forefront mm -hmm. and our only objective was to provide a meaningful journey which would engage the mind 
and prompt for the, the motivation of everyone to learn. Uh, training uh, as a means to an end needs to be more than a requirement. So uh, we know that soft skills and even cognitive agilities, if you don't want to learn, uh, they cannot be a requirement. So uh, with this in mind, uh, and, and with a great collaboration with uh, Haragi's Research Consulting, uh, we were able to develop a solution which exact, uh, achieved exactly that. Uh, therefore, the support and efforts of crewing officials, ship managers, and any other seafarer development professional, uh, it's now supported. Uh, we wanted always to make it easy for our customers to assign an assessment, receive a comprehensive report, uh, compare them with uh, industry or, or peers or company level, mm -hmm. get indications on which skills the seafarer will need to develop and access the right courses to develop them all in one place. And now we're proud to say that we have those courses in one place. Yes, so it was definitely a huge uh, collaborative, uh, long overdue um, collaboration. And um, so uh, Michael, uh, I, I, I do want to uh, come back to you because we were discussing earlier uh, how it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. So can you, um, when it comes to non-technical skills development, can you tell us how this solution addresses this problem that we have? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know whether you've heard about the 80-20 rule of, uh, by Wilfredo Pareto. He was a great uh, Italian mathematician. What he was claiming is that uh, when we're dealing an issue, 80% of the, of, the, of the factors only have a minor 20% impact on the result, while the remaining 20% have uh, a huge impact of 80%. So the main idea is to, to focus on this 20% that will make uh, the, much more uh, impact on the, our results. And this is, uh, applies also to training, uh, to be honest. Yes, we have the core, uh, core methodologies, the common ground to, uh, to stand on, uh, that uh, might be um, uh, common regardless of the sector of the, of the issue that uh, we're dealing with, but it's this 20% of the specifics that will make the real difference. And this is what we've done with, uh, with this project. We utilize the knowledge that uh, both partners had uh, in, in the sector. From our side, we've conducted a 27-month uh, research, for instance, uh, called Naftothorax. It was uh, aiming to develop specialized uh, HR systems for the maritime sector, aiming to develop a maritime cluster. The great work that was done during the developmental fa phase of uh, Save Metrics, lots of uh, interviews there, primary research, test for research, and data analysis and so on um, it was a rich uh, base to, to stand on. And of course, the extensive um, experience that um, Sabridge uh, has in the sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and we try to apply this knowledge in, uh, in uh, some in the courses we developed. We wanted to do small courses, interesting courses. We call them uh, uh, knowledge capsules. Aiming exactly that, uh, using the specifics of the sector in order to uh, trigger the mind of the participant of the seafarers based on the three pillars I've mentioned before and uh, make them validated to themselves uh, why they're doing what they're doing and finding their own solutions. Mm -hmm. Well, no, so I mean, all, all the research. Um and the, the norms, which uh, Evie's going to go into later, um, the norms collected um, pretty much helped you create the industry-specific uh, non-technical mm -hmm. skills training. Um, so I, I want to discuss it. You, you had mentioned briefly the method used for the videos um, because um, going into training and development again, um, there's a, a new best practice now that we all have cell phones and we stream videos online. Um, when it comes to training, uh, holding the attention of someone, it's, be, it's better to have uh, the shorter time length uh, when you're trying to reach them uh, in videos. Do you, do you um, agree with that? Definitely, definitely, and, and especially in soft skills development, mm -hmm. uh, 
Look, there are so many issues that you can tackle if you want to, to expand on the training, but uh, that's not the point. The point is to um, uh, make participants uh, understand the main idea and uh, make them uh, able to, to practice what they've learned in various situations. So the main concept is to, to trigger their minds, ask the proper questions like the MEFTIC uh, approach I've mentioned before, uh, and make them think on finding flexibly solutions. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've used uh, a lot of the methodologies that I mentioned before, like storytelling, metaphors, uh, third generation uh, neurolinguistic programming techniques, and so on, that will make them interesting um, and not be not be bored to watch uh, a big video from the from the mobile uh, okay. phone. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I agree with you 100%. And to, to move on uh, and talk about um, the assessments, um, I'm going to call Evie back. Um, so I'm going to continue on with the same question. And Evie, can you help us understand how this solution is applicable, uh, applicable to the industry, meaning uh, the assessments in terms of the exact skills covered? Uh, as mentioned earlier by Michael, when it comes to non-technical skills assessment and development, uh, it is very important that the targeted skills uh, are specific to the role of the individual and, of course, their job setting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in developing our solution, we carried out an extensive research mm -hmm. uh, among seafarers and companies within the maritime industry, so as to determine what, uh, which exact skills are most critical of the seafarer's role. Mm -hmm. uh, so, to conclude the list of skills that our solution covers, we conducted a thorough job analysis through online surveys and interviewing seafarers for, of various demographics and ranks mm -hmm. uh, to uh, identify their tasks and in turn what knowledge, uh, skills and abilities a seafarer must possess in order to perform these tasks effectively. Uh, so then we provided uh, seafarers crew managers and directors with a list of more than 50 non-technical skills mm -hmm. and ask them to rate uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 each skill depending on their significance in the maritime industry. Uh, in total, we concluded on, uh, on 18 skills, 15 mm -hmm. for each rank, uh, that were deemed to be necessary for carrying out the required tasks. Uh, based on these skills, we created one assessment for each of the four ranks, and of course the, the individual training courses for each individual skill. Mm -hmm. uh, we also created different norms for each rank. So uh, rank specific norms are very important because they are fairer. Uh, that means that uh, they do not compare the performance of a captain to that of a cadet. Uh, and also companies have the flexibility of creating their own company norms. Those, uh, the performance of their seafarers will be compared to the overall performance of the seafarers in that specific company uh, and not to the general industry population. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of work went into safe metrics, right? The assessment, um, mm -hmm. because we needed, we needed it to um, actually perform well, right? Because when, when you're starting to do rank specific um, and, you know, collecting the norms was a, a real important piece uh, to this assessment. Um, so I, w I would like to mention, thank you so much, Evie. Uh, so th the entire solution is Di uh, digital and delivered online, um, so you can train your seafarer uh, no matter where where they are. They could be at home. Um, they could it could be prior to they join while that while they're with you. Um, so the the added convenience of having it on one platform is really important. Excel is not a soft skill, it's a technical skill. However, if you know how to, to work on an Excel, then you, if you have also the decision-making soft skill, 
when you can take uh, better decisions. It's, uh, Excel is uh, definitely a, a technical skill. Soft skill will allow you to to decide uh, based on the findings on your Excel, on your data on the Excel, what to do next. Um, the soft skills and the ability to cope, especially um, in the, the, the times that we are now. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to uh, elaborate more on Sherrod's thinking. Definitely, I totally agree. Uh, as I said before, the, uh, it's, uh, um, soft skills, cognitive skills are, are the, the, the qualities that will get you further. Yes, uh, you might be well educated, but that doesn't mean anything if you don't apply soft skills or cognitive skills in such a way that will suit the position of your role. Thank you, Michael. And Peter, you're, you're um, absolutely correct. Um, and the, the low performer, if you want the low performer to have the same type of skills, that you should have the um, type of training so that they, they can um, go ahead and um, do as the high performer. Um, possibly the high performer can also uh, do a showcasing to the low performer. <laughs> Of course, it can be used for also for individual seafarers. Uh, the the assessments that are live for the last uh, two and a half years uh, already they are offered to uh, individual seafarers and companies, uh, and now also the package together can be uh, can be offered to individual seafarers. And we have also uh, maybe we can bring up the. Um, uh, the, the link uh, for the online shop that uh, you can buy and the, the development courses can be uh, purchased also in packages of the clusters that are being assessed as mentioned by Evie before or as a whole package of the 15 skills per rank or one by one. Thank you, Valentinos. Basically, it's cognitive skills assessment. Uh, they're uh, they're called aptitude tests, uh, but fatigue can also can also be included in the soft skills. We uh, we assess it in relation to perseverance, uh, the ability of one to uh, keep working for a long time and not uh, get distracted mm -hmm. uh, by excessive workload, stress, or fatigue. So. Now yeah. Um, and I have a question. So um, for you, Emmy, uh, just to build off of Dora's question. And um, so when assessing, because the safe metrics offers both soft skills and cognitive skills um, assessments. Um, in relation to it, it, do you think it's a better practice to do both assessments? Don't do just the soft skills, but also the cognitive skills, since you said that some of the skills kind of uh, interact with each other? Yeah, of course, uh, it's better to have a more complete picture. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you assess two things, if you assess both soft and cognitive skills, of course, you will get uh, more information about the specific person. Uh, and also you can uh, uh, combine them in order to have a more complete understanding of, uh, of a person's uh, overall performance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Abby. Stress, um, more or less, is the, is the fear of a future action. Uh, we are, we feel fear that something will happen or will not happen. Uh, and this is how we manage this emotion. If we, if we, if we think of a stress as something negative, then an increased stress will uh, will be present. But if we see this as an alert, uh, saying that uh, in order not to be afraid of the future event, uh, we act in such a way that either the, the future event will not happen or 
will happen accordingly, then uh, stress uh, will be will be lower, and uh, this is how we approach uh, uh, during our uh, courses uh, stress management. So it's it's all about acting in such a way that will find the solution that uh, make us uh, feel uh, stressful. And we, we think of stress as a noble uh, emotion that alerts us on, uh, on acting and make us uh, um, uh, do whatever we have to do in order to, to, to eliminate the stress, this fear. And you're you're absolutely correct. And uh, uh, there's so much focus. We we said it earlier uh, that goes into the technical skills training, uh, especially in the maritime industry. That the training um, for soft skills and certain it's actually really a, a, like an afterthought. Well, it has in the past and previously. Um, certain um, situations have brought it to the forefront. Um, Valentinos, if you want to go ahead and elaborate on that. Basically, when someone is going to be promoted into a leadership position, that's why we assess the person to see how we can um, contribute to what the person already, the individual, the professional already is bringing with him. Uh, so this is this is to enhance. Of course, in the ideal scenario, uh, every single one of us uh, should uh, should uh, engage with soft skill development from childhood. Even that's a great observation. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very situation, uh, situational uh, question. Um, if anybody wants to go ahead and answer. Uh, well, there's, um, in our business life, we always have uh, people working with that we might not be able, we're not compatible with us, uh, like Gorov said. But uh, the main thing here is to find the common ground uh, which is the values of the companies that we have to serve, the culture of the company, the goals, uh, the priorities of the company that uh, will allow us to be compatible at least towards these goals. It's, uh, it's not something personal on a business protocol. We have to act on a business protocol. And uh, of course, on a personal protocol, you might choose not to be around with this guy, but on a business protocol, we have to tackle, uh, we have to stand on the common ground of the values, the culture and the goals and priorities of the company. Thank you, Michael. 